In this tutorial, we'll be continuing our study of the cutoff versus button two bet pots. And now we're going to be looking at the four span low boards. So, relatively dry board, but the ranks of the cards are fairly low. With here in this subset, this database, queen high being, being the highest, and it all goes all the way down to seven high. Doesn't go lower than that because six high is automatically connected board. Just looking at this overall, the looking at the equities between the two players, player one being the cutoff and player two being the button, the overall equity for the cutoff is pretty poor on these lower boards with only 45.98% equity for these 16 flop types. And the reason why that's the case is because the cutoff tends to open a lot of the offsuit high card type hands and high low type hands such as queen seven, king four, which can miss a low board fairly frequently. So on these lower boards, the cutoff has missed and has flopped mostly air. On the other hand, the button with their fairly dense pocket pair range will have hit either a set or just have made a pair in contrast to cutoffs air, right? Overcard type air, high card type air. So you've got this relatively low equity for the cutoff. And as a result, you've got a fairly substantial checking frequency. So the cutoff, because their equity is fairly low, it just makes sense for them to be checking at a fairly high frequency to the button and then letting the button try to put money into the pot with a combination of value and bluffs. The cutoff on a lot of these balls will, will just have to overfold because they have so many weak hands which lose to the bluffs that, that the button could be using. Um, on the other hand, because the cutoff has a lot of these stronger pocket pairs pre-flop and those will often flop an overpair, the button can, sorry, the, the cutoff can go for a check raise. And so in, in this tutorial, we'll be focusing a little bit more on the cutoff check and then the button bet and looking at the check raise strategy and also the defense against the check raise, right? This On these types of boards, ranging from 65 to 99% checking frequency, but here the average is 87 so fairly substantial checking, and when there is a bet, it's usually only around half pot, with here half pot happening about 10% of the time, and then quarter pot happening only 2.5% of the time. So not a lot of betting, and when the betting happens, it's fairly small. So let's have a look after at the button strategy after the cutoff checks. After the cutoff checks, there's a fairly substantial betting frequency. So here, the button's only checking back a little under 40% of the time, which means that they're betting 60% of the time on average. And the size which they're betting is actually fairly small, right? And this makes sense because the bet size is mainly to deny the equity of those overcard type hands which have missed this board and will have difficulty defending even against a small bet. So there's a 40, almost a 42% average betting frequency on these, these low kind of drier rag boards for the quarter pot size and then half pot size at around 16%. There are a few board types with some slightly bigger sizes, such as this Queen 9 type board, but a lot of the lower type boards, a lot of the lower boards where the button has flopped a fair amount of sets, often three sets, there's going to be some small betting, right? Denying that, that equity from those other card hands. Let's have a look at one of them. Let's go for 932. So here in the 932, cut off checking 94% of the time. We can look at their betting range quickly, but this betting range about half pot. And it's fairly polar, a lot of over pairs, sets, top pairs in terms of percentages of this betting range, about 30%-ish top pair are better. And then a lot of the bluffs, which the cutoff can use. On the other hand, their checking range is much more of these pocket pairs. All the pocket pairs will, will check, weaker top pairs will decide to check. And then there's a bunch of ace highs and unmade hands, which are just checking to give up. All of these hands down the bottom are very weak and don't have any equity against any kind of betting range. So as a result, after the cutoff checks, the button is betting at a fairly high frequency, about 65% of the time, and almost 60% of the time betting for this quarter pot size. In game, you can go a bit smaller if you wanted to, or even a little bit, little bit bigger. But something around these this quarter pot size will work pretty well because it denies a fair amount of equity from the opponent's overcard hands and high card hands, which just have difficulty defending, especially the offsuit ones without a spade, or even suited ones without two diamonds. A lot of them will have difficulty defending, so here like this Jack 10, King 10 and whatnot, Queen 7, etc. Well, all of these hands just can't defend against a small bet. And so 
against this small bet. The cutoff is folding at almost 32% of the time. Remember, alpha for this small bet is about 20%. Alpha for a quarter pot bet is about 20%. And so overfolding because the the button's checking range, the button's check backs will have some EV, right? Because the cutoff really can't really can't get to showdown, right? Really can't get to showdown with the range that's so weak. And so they have to do a lot of checking, do a lot of giving up. And because they're doing a lot of checking and giving up, they have to overfold the flop here. By, even though it's only by a small amount, it's not that much of a small amount. They're folding almost 60% more than they should be at alpha, right? So they're actually folding substantially more. And that just reflects the check back EV for the button here on the flop because the button's range is, which is that much stronger, is fairly strong. Now on the flip side, because the button's betting so wide, such a wide range, the cutoff can go for this check raise fairly frequently, right? So they've got this 24.5% uh, this check raise frequency for this 50% check raise. It's a fairly small check raise in the grand scheme of things, but that check raise is a, in a combination of denying equity and from all of those these pocket pairs and high card type hands that the button is betting and then also trying to get some value while avoiding hitting one of the, avoiding running up into one of these three sets which the which the button has so say for example you're in the cutoff and you've got the you flop them over pair on this board instead of betting out which is you can but often the correct play is to check and then go for the check raise so here with the tens jacks queens the kings aces like all these go for the check raise ace nines from a stronger nine x goes for the check raise and look at the check raise range here and fairly set over pair and, and top pair heavy what's that about 30 32 ish percent top pair are better and then there's just some other hands mixed in at a lowest frequency and obviously a fair amount of a fair amount of bluffs and the bluff selection is you either have a spade or two spades and the combination of, of having a spade and a bunch of hands with with a bunch of flush draws and a bunch of backdoor flush draws work pretty well on a lot of flush draw runouts and even when the flush draws miss you do still have some hands in there for example backdoor diamonds which can bluff fairly effectively on on a brick run out some gut shots here and some pairs being thrown in there which which will work pretty well blocking the button sets so make that raise now here because this raise is so small right and it's got a fairly fairly condensed fairly merged range with a lot of different hand types a lot of different hand types a lot of different equity the button is actually going to go for a small three bet as well so you get this three bet on the flop and now this three bet is, is actually quite polar. So this three bet is like top pair, over pairs, but a lot of sets. There's 22.3% of sets. And then there's a bunch of hands that are somewhat in the middle, right? The, these pocket pairs are being used as bluffs because the button's preflop range is basically saying there's not much else that the button can use and they need to outdraw. They need to outdraw an over pair, right? So if they're outdrawing an over pair, that's fairly difficult to do. You either have to have on this kind of board 932 you'd have to have like a flush draw like ace high which is which is a fair amount of or you can just raise a pocket pair which the button has a lot of pocket pairs a lot of these pocket pairs also have a backdoor flush draw and then those can outdraw one of those over one of those over pairs in the cutoffs range by hitting a set or hitting with that backdoor flush draw so the bluff selection there is important and looking at the response to this all these pocket pairs are continuing and the pocket pairs with the backdoor flush draw are, are the main ones that are continuing. The other pocket pairs without the backdoor flush draw are letting it go. And then the other pairs are continuing as well because remember the other pairs here actually overlap with the value range on the in the cutoffs range there. And of course the, the 9x is all continuing because they also overlap. And then the other kinds of draws like these backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw type stuff, they're, they're continuing as well, right? Because this check race is fairly small, so you should be continuing with a reasonably wide range. Like, what are they risking? They're risking six to win the 13. So six over 13, you've got to calculate that quickly to calculate the, the folding frequency. Six over 13.5, 44.44. So alpha's 44.44. Folding a little bit less than that because the the cutoff's check raise range has a substantial amount of, of equity, very, very draw heavy. So folding a bit less than that to prevent those draws from profiting by by making this check raise and then also this three bet frequency is 18 percent so you make this three bet and then just be prepared to, to face a jam but your three bet range is fairly polar so if you get jammed into it you're continuing like sets there and then almost nothing else in terms of what's going on like you're continuing with those three lots of sets and then like you got some over pairs and stuff and some nut flush draw type hands which will continue because your opponent's jamming in this there's nine x flush draw the, the cutoff is jamming in this nine x flush draw not super important to know because there's not a lot of jamming and there's still plenty of sack depth 
left to play if the button makes the mistake of making a slightly a three bit that's slightly too big so for example this pot size three bit then there's more jamming from the cutoff just because they're out of position and then the buttons risked a lot and there's this board has got that flush draw on it and there's a little bit of straight draw as well which can be used and so you can just rip it in with the, this 9x with the flush draw type stuff blocking that top set and have a substantial amount of equity against this sort of raising range like for example 9x with a flush draw blocking the set of nines and also has that 35 ish 35 to 40 percent equity against a set which is which is substantial all right let's move on to a different board jack 5-2 for example going to see a lot of the similar themes here so checking betting fairly small betting fairly small different types of hands are folding now so some of these ace highs are folding the hands around the jack against a small bet because if there's a jack there you've got a pair of jacks or you've got when you've got like these offsuit hands you've either got a pair of jacks or you've got two overcards of the jack with a backdoor flush draw sorry a backdoor straight draw and if your hand is suited sometimes you've got a backdoor flush draw as well with that so you can have a backdoor straight draw backdoor flush draw type hand with these suited broadways example here queen 10 suited makes a backdoor straight draw on top and the bottom so that's always continuing and because this raising frequency has to be very high because the buttons range for the small size is very wide the queen 10 is raising all the time queen 10 suited king queen suited a lot of these do cut backdoor flush draw type hands raising at a very high frequency also you've got to watch out for some of this king x between the five and the two right here king four king three suited those hands also have a backdoor straight draw and a backdoor flush draw make sure you can pick up on that when there's a five two and then you've got a four and a three that you can use these hands effectively rather than just like giving them up a lot of people a lot of beginners especially will just misread the strength of their hand and not realize that they've got a backdoor straight draw there with the five and the two and so they'll just dump that but the hands are dumped by this king seven king eight queen seven queen six type stuff which is just nothing there's, there's nothing in between the jack and the fives hands which flop between the jack and the five aren't doing very well of course if you have a, a suited connector that's something a little bit better because a lot of suited connectors will be able to make more backdoor straight draws with either the jack or the five but often and sometimes both right so here nine eight will make some straights with the five also make some straights with the jack so that, that's why the nine eight with a backdoor flush draw is always continuing it's a small bet but it's a lot more difficult to do that with this 8-7, 9 10-8 stuff just because that extra gap means that there's far fewer backdoor straights you can make. Um, raising at a fairly high frequency, some 50% here, some 75% here. Say for example you've got this, the 75%, there's not a lot of 3-betting but definitely there's this 50%, there's this 11% 3-bet frequency with the set. If there's a bigger bet size, the, the check raise frequency goes down a little bit, down 15% against this half pot raise, but it's still a lot of raising, right? So there's this set of this pocket, pocket queens, pocket kings, raising a lot of the time. There's this ace jack raising all the time, even against this half pot bet. And then there's a substantial three bet range because remember the buttons range is fairly merged. And because of the way the equities are, if you face a small check raise, that's fairly merged as well and so then this third bet will be the final polar one which will have some difficulty defending against with the third raise with so with the fourth raise with the four bet and in this sim itself there there is some limitations because i haven't put a, a size smaller than pot for the four bet anyway so let's have a look at that maybe okay so check raising the check raising range for the cutoff here looking at it a lot of the top pairs the other pairs and the sets right that's the value component obviously not raising them all the time you need to have some calls with those top pairs especially the weaker top pairs just because then just because the weaker top pairs aren't actually super strong but the top pairs with a good kicker are pretty nice to have and pretty nice to raise just because then you can now kick your opponent and draw to to, to good two pairs although there's not drawing to two pairs isn't super important but the main thing is that if your kicker is fairly weak you can make a check raise and then draw to a two pair which loses to a set which is not super nice but if you make that raise and then your opponent calls with with whatever if you have ace jack for example and the ace comes you've made two pair and your opponent can sometimes have made can sometimes have made top pair with the ace x right or if you've got king jack there you, you raise and your opponent calls a king queen they make king x on 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 a king right and you've got two pairs all good things right you end up making a strong two pair and they make a strong top pair and then you call them with your jack raise so for example, check raise and then and a king comes, your king jack's very, very happy, you can bet half pot, king queen is calling down, brick river, and then you can just rip it in and the king queen's calling sometimes, right? Maybe there's a seven, maybe it's a bit different, not really. 
Well, King Jack's not really doing too much there, but the five is. But like half pot bet, King Queens they're calling. What size is here for King Jack? What size bet? Queen. Anyway, so that's, that's the idea with raising the the ones with a strong kicker, just because like when you make that that over card two pair your opponent sometimes has made top pair with a good kicker because their preflop range has got a lot of those uh, sort of strong suited broadways and offset broadways strong offset broadways in, in, in their range and then obviously you don't get cooled by by making two pair and then your opponent has a set and then making the two pair with jack nine jack eight isn't super important just because there, there's not a lot of stuff that hits the nine and the eight besides that set in the falling of the check raise range because there's not a lot of stuff that hits that it's not super important to have too much like two pair coverage there you can reasonably well cover it with these ace eight ace nine like ten nine nine eight type stuff with the backdoor flush draw you can make those middle pairs there reasonably well you don't have to make like a two pair because your opponent doesn't really turn any, anything super strong on that besides the set of nines obviously other pairs will always beat the the top pairs so that they raise a very high frequency in the sets as well yeah and then the response against this check raise three betting a fair amount and the like obviously the three bet frequency and three bet range construction is very set heavy and because it's so set heavy it's difficult for the opponent to make any kind of any kind of four bets but there, there will be some donking on the turn after you make this three bet there's a fairly amount of it's a fairly substantial amount of donking about 18 percent of the time and the turns which donk are obviously the turns that work really well for the cutoffs call three bet range so like the five here to the king right because a lot of the 5x calls some of this 2x calls and like having a five or a two sure it, it, it brings trips for the cutoff but also reduces the number of sets in the, the buttons range right and because it reduces the number of sets that means that the button has arrived with the turn arrived to the turn with a range that has essentially over bluffed the flop and because of a lot of flop, it's going to be checking back a lot on the turn. And because it's going to be checking back a lot on the turn, you really want to deny equity from that, from those, from those bluffs that are going to take that check back at a high frequency. And so, how do you deny equity from those kinds of hands? You donk. So here, for example, on the five, it's a hundred percent donking frequency there, just because the range which makes this three bet is very set of fives heavy, very set of fives heavy. The the range that three bets here is basically. A lot of set of fives, some of the set of twos, none of the set of jacks, and then just like some top pair. So when you make the three bet, and then there's a call and there's a five, like you need to be donking, right? Just because it's because your opponent doesn't have anything anymore. Really got like top pair and stuff, but the range which calls the three bet is scared of the set of fives, which has suddenly reduced in number by by two thirds. So it's gone down to a third of the number of combos. So it goes down from three combos of sets to one combo of quads. I'm um, certainly for a two. Right, fairly bricky. None of the bluffs improve for the for the button here in that three bet range, and then it just blocks that set substantially and gives you a little bit of S two. So it's not too bad. Betting small, fording a lot against a small bet, right? Because it takes a lot of it, you. You put a lot of money in to get to this node, right? So against this donk, there they, they can be overfolds because here on the flop they've put fifteen big blinds in, and then they have to. Put another nine big blinds in to make this donk. The even the alpha for this is twenty percent folding at forty four point six percent is totally fine because they've called this bet on the previous street, and, and you'll see that a lot with donks even in in like the non GTO type lines, or like when there's a low donking frequency, there's usually going to be overfolding against the donk because that reflects the the fact that the out of position player has had to call that last bet on the previous street, and so some of those bluffs should let it go. Otherwise, they can just Otherwise, they can just call and get, and then they get a lot of value by donking the turn, because you, you're overcalling by a substantial amount. The jack, the jack doesn't really matter, All right? There's no, there's no real donking there. This king, what is going on with this king? It brings brings a set. Remember, you've got the, these over pairs here. So when the, the king, ace, queen come up, it increases the number of sets and two pairs with the king jack in the cutoffs range. All right, so we've looked at a couple of boards focusing on the check raise line and the three bet line, and then, then how to play a little bit of the turns in, in the three bet line. Just remember that on these sort of lowish boards, there's going to be a lot of checking from the cutoff, a lot of betting from the button, and then a lot of check raising, and then some three bets. It's a lot of check raising from the cutoff, and then some three bets from the button. So that, that's how the hand plays out on the flop, and then some of the turns will play a certain way depending on the flop line. 
in the next tutorial we'll focus a little bit more on how these check raises play out and the turn strategy after you're calling a check raise and then we yeah we'll just focus on a little bit of the turn strategy after after you've made a check raise and then and then the imposition player is called and we'll look at the different turns and how they'll play out and then some of the rivers as well to see what 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 hands go all in and what hands play fairly conservatively all right so thanks for watching this video guys i'll see you all in the next one bye now